Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm your guest host, Holland Van de Nuenhoff. Thank you for joining us. We have a number of callers on the line. Before we go back to them, we have Dakari Jackson in studio. How you doing, Holland? Outstanding. A fellow Oki. Yes. It's finally great to meet you in person. Yeah, I think I was here uh, when I interviewed back in July or August. You guys were here, but I didn't get a chance to talk to you because you were live on air, and then I had a run out to the airport but you know it's nice to meet you in person i had a chance to interview you you were one of the first interviews i had when i got down here to austin so it's uh, nice to meet you in person yeah definitely it's, it's an honor to meet everyone here at the info uh, operation a lot of talent behind the scenes i'd like to thank the staff behind the scenes for their support and everything else uh you were going to bring up a number of topics apparently there is a video that's going viral yes this is one of the top videos on youtube right now this is actually sent to me last night had a chance to review it. It's a very interesting piece. I'm pretty sure a lot of people have already had it, had a chance to see it if you're savvy on YouTube. It's the clip of a student, he's in class, and he basically tells his teacher that she doesn't know how to teach. It's a very interesting clip. And then we, I wanna talk a little bit about this and maybe some homeschooling things as well. But let's go ahead with that clip. If you would just get up and teach them instead of handing them a freaking packet, yo. There's kids in here who don't learn like that. Bye. They need to learn face to face. Bye. You're just getting mad because I'm pointing out the obvious no, and you're choosing. You're wasting my time. No, I'm not wasting your time. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you what you need to do. Get out. You want kids to come in your class? You want them to get excited yeah, for this? You, you gotta come in here, you gotta make them excited. You want a kid to change and start right. doing better? You gotta touch his freaking heart. Can't expect a kid to change if all you do is just tell him. You gotta you gotta take this job serious. This is the future of this nation. And when you come in here, like you did last time, and make a statement about, oh, this is my paycheck, indeed it is. But this is my country's future okay. and my education. I, I that. Can you go outside, please? Score I, I got but there's a limit when I'm not big, okay. but simply making an observation. Okay, okay. And now I will leave. You're That's welcome. Good. And if you would like... I'll no. teach you a little more so you no. can actually learn how to teach no. a freaking no. class. Because since I got here, I've done nothing but no. read packets. No. So don't try and take credibility for teaching me jack. Just go. Bye. Now, Holland, that was a very interesting clip, I thought so. Because, you know, I had a chance. I was very fortunate. I got to go to one of the better schools within my city. So I can't say I can actually relate to his particular situation. But we see a lot of that with it, no, no child left behind and so on. And the guy says in the clip, all you do is you hand us packets. You don't teach us anything. You don't engage us in any way. You just give us, you know, the school gives you these packets and you give them to us. Yeah, that kid didn't mention No Child Left Behind, but that's exactly what that is. Mm -hmm. um, I've talked to uh, teachers who are working now teaching kids, and they say, we're not allowed to teach. Right. Um, all we do is just hand information so they can pass the test. Mm -hmm. And it's basically pass the test. It's all, all they do. They're trying to change them, change, to train them to pass the test, not to think critically, to get any type of real skills that will help them in actual life. It's just read this packet and take the test. That's pretty much all they're trained to do. Well, that's I mean, the purpose of public education is not to create an enlightened, inquisitive, uh, active citizenry who's going to be vigorous in defense of their rights. It is to create corporate cogs and political uh, minions who will do what they're told. That is the purpose of public education. That was his founding in Prussia, in Germany. They openly talked about we're going to have a stratified education system, one class for the peasants, one class for the managers, one class for the elite. Mm -hmm. We see that played out to this day. And uh, if people happen to become educated in the public educated system, that's just an unintended consequence. Yes, and actually, since you bring up uh, those those foreign areas, let's take a look at this article right here. We can get a doc cam. Americans warn homeschool is stripped of rights. Now, this is from earlier in this month, but it's still very relevant. Recently, U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder, Attorney General Eric Holder, once again, has said that homeschooling is not a parent's right. It is a statement that some are saying should frighten American parents. Nations like Germany and Sweden show that the governments take away homeschooling rights. It's a slippery slope with no parental rights. Eric Holder, we got to love that guy. He's providing he's, us with he's a really... pretty busy. A lot of good material he gives us. <laughs> I mean, from, from Fast and Furious to anything else, and now he's talking and now about... now he's taking a stand on homeschooling. Yes. Yeah, so, been... yeah, I really respect his stand on homeschooling. Mm -hmm. Well, Eric Holder obviously is a tool of the establishment through and through. That's oh, yes. how he got his start in the Department of Justice covering up the Oklahoma City bombing back in 1996. He wasn't involved from the beginning, but he was brought in afterwards to manage the cover-up. And now he's brought back as Attorney General, right. just in time to manage Fast and Furious... Now he's issuing statements on this about homeschooling. Yeah, and you um, want to take your advice from this guy. And people always bring up the, the question, like, why do you blame 
Obama or Eric Holder or whoever. I mean, when you look at a guy like Eric Holder who is purposely withholding documents that could get to a deeper level of Fast and Furious, if nothing else, he's guilty of that. You know, even if maybe he was, you know, he's like been Wally, censured by Congress. Yeah, maybe and he's, he's still not in office. Wally Coyote pushing down the plunger on the dynamite, but the guy is withholding critical information. He's the cover-up artist. He, he's he's not the executioner. He is the one put in place to cover up everything and to make sure that any inquiries will be frustrated by his position as a attorney general. Exactly, and it's just more. We see uh, the war on homeschoolers, war on uh, people who just want to educate the children themselves. Like, because I heard uh, some of the guys talking, they have. Very young children now, and I was asking one of the guys, well, when your child gets old enough to go to school, what are you going to do? He's like, well, I guess I'm just going to send them out to school and just detox them when they get back home. And it seems like a very laborious process. You know, you send your kid out there for, you know, eight hours a day or so, and then they come home like, okay, almost everything they told you was a lie. You know, that's pretty much a, the Well, two plus two does equal four, but everything else, yeah, there's yeah. an agenda. Well, even that. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing is two plus two equals four may not be the same always, according to 1984. Yeah, so, I mean, that's the situation people are dealing with, and I know we have some calls, and we can get to those in just one second. I definitely want to have uh, people's opinions on this, uh, on the homeschooling front, on the clip we just showed with the student, and just get everybody's opinions on these matters. Yeah, exactly. Let's go to the callers. I like to relate one story first. I have a very good friend of mine who's an Oklahoma City school teacher. He spent a couple of years in the business, and he finally came to me, and he said, you know what? I think I found out what my job was. I said, what? I think my job is to keep poor people dumb. Mm. Because he's not allowed to teach these inner city kids. Not allowed at all. I said, I think you're onto it. That's pretty much what it is to keep the status quo as it is and to uh, effectuate control of the whole society. That is the purpose of public education, and he is learning the hard way. Yeah, and, and a lot of teachers get blamed. And I mean, just like the teacher we saw, from what I understand, that was the actual teacher, not some substitute teacher was the Who would be able to tell. I was told. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it seemed like a substitute teacher. You know, they come in, you know, okay, I'm teaching math today, I'm teaching science. Here's a packet, whatever. I'm going to be on my laptop. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. But a lot of the teachers take a lot of heat for this, but a lot of people don't know that the teachers can't really actively engage. I mean, she, didn't seem, she didn't seem too engaged herself, but let's say if it was a teacher who was interested in the materials and in the students' well-being, you know, they can't actively engage them on that level to really boost up the children. No, you're going to be rapidly frustrated if you're an earnest teacher like my friend. He joined out of good instincts to teach his community to raise the next generation, and he's totally frustrated in his efforts, and he's come to the conclusion that his job is to stratify society. And uh, he's waking up. Anyways, we have a number of callers. I don't want to leave them out. Uh, we'll take uh, Jakari and I. We're going to take your calls and sure. talk about what you want to talk about. We have Jamie from Tennessee going to discuss 3D guns. Welcome, Jamie, to the Alex Jones Show. Uh, you'd like to talk about 3D guns. Yeah, that's correct. Um, I also want to comment real quick on Jakari's statement about uh, No Child Left Behind. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm 23 years old and uh, I have a five-year-old son. Um, I'm about $60,000 in debt because I've kept him in school since he was three months old uh, in uh, the local college here. Um, they have a child division there. Uh, back to the No Child Left Behind part. I'm sorry. I was I was jumping out of the way there. Um, when I was... Uh, I was raped and molested for more than 10 years of my life and uh, moved throughout foster home to foster home to mm -hmm. residential facility to group home. Um, during this no child left behind period when the, when the law was, was put into place, um, I was actually in school. What this did for someone like me uh, or, or anyone else who's been abused throughout their past, um, they pretty much put you in what's called a behavior modification class. Um, if you've had any sort of... Uh, any sort of traumatizing events, uh, they put you in what's called a behavior modification. It's actually called behavior um, modification? Behavior modification. Wow, at least they're not being shy called. about it. Mm -hmm. They they seclude you completely from the school. Um, and, and, and this is just an example. This is my example. This is actually what happened to me. Um, while I was in this foster care agency, uh, I went to another county and left the jurisdiction of the, of the county which the behavior modification was housed in. When I went to this other county for foster care, they put me in a normal school in a normal facility. Did they uh, keep you kids. drugged up on uh, far, big pharma Absolutely. psychotropic drugs? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Psychotropic drugs, Steroquil, Trazodone, Lithium, wow. Adderall. What you'll find often is that uh, these CPS agencies are actually farming out these children, selling uh, them as lab monkeys, basically, to big pharma, testing drugs on them, testing the long-term results of heavy absolutely. exposure um, to big pharma. So that is what they're doing, literally selling these children. 
Absolutely. Um, and during and during the, my four years in this, uh, I'm sorry, let me go back. While I was in the school with uh, with normal kids, I did absolutely fine. I had no altercations whatsoever. I actually excelled in school. When I went back to the jurisdiction and completed my foster care program, uh, in in the amount of time, the minimum amount of time that you could complete it, and I went back and showed them the progress that I had made, and they said, "No, that's too bad. You didn't do it in our county under our eyes. It mm. doesn't count." Mm-hmm. I said, okay. So I spent three more years in this behavior modification class. It has eighth grade books. Whether you're 12th grade or eighth grade, you study the same books every single year. Wow. Uh, so, so really, the child is completely left behind, and they act like you're not left behind. And even the kids who do act out in school. Now, now me, for instance, you give a 14-year-old kid 300 milligrams of Steroquil in the morning, and then 300 milligrams at lunch. By the time I even get on the bus, I'm nodding out so hard that it's like a morphine drip. Mm-hmm. I can't stay awake. So I get to school, lay down my head, and then I'm disobeying direct orders. And and, and they call the police on you. And, well, it's a self-fulfilling and prophecy. They feed you full of drugs. This leads to unproductive behavior, which you're then penalized for, which leads to more drugs. This is the whole system. Exactly. It's self-feeding. Exactly. Yeah, and I'm only a few years exactly. older than, than the caller, but I saw many kids on drugs when I was in school. I'm not necessarily saying they got them, you know, because of the school, but, you know, behavior problems at home or whatever the case may be, and they come in, they're doped up. And like I said, they have trouble paying attention. They're acting out in class. Uh, even the kids who may not, may have not had such a uh, adverse reaction to the medication, they're, they kind of have this placebo effect. You know, they think if I take this drug I'm, or if I don't take this drug, I'm just going to act wild. So they just come in and just act wild. I know I was talking to some young people, some friends of mine, and they were relating the fact that street drugs are really no, no longer even used in high schools. I guess not really. It's, it's uh, all said, pharma. Only, uh, it's all I'm pharma. Only a few years it's older than the caller, but uh, you know, maybe some marijuana. But other than yeah. that, most of it was. Uh, it's all uh, drugs, yeah, yeah. It's all big pharma drugs they steal from their parents or their cell. I was shocked, surprised. I mean, and that's that's what they want. They want everyone hooked on pharma from a young age because these are behavior modification drugs. Well, if they're behavior modification exactly. drugs, they can modify your behavior to a desired end. Exactly. Now, you did have a, uh, a question about the... Like say real quick. Oh, go ahead. Uh, Jakari, I just want to let you know that uh, about three months ago, I was listening to InfoWars, and uh, I'm, not, I'm not too sure where I had heard about it yet. Was Alex ever on a radio show called Coast to Coast AM? Yes. He's been on there several times. Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 So uh, I started to wake up in in 2011 and and pretty much fell back asleep with, uh, you know, Fitzer and and Purdue University cramming their medication down my throat. Mm -hmm. I woke up about three months ago to you, Jakari, and uh, I just want to say I appreciate everything you guys are doing and all the info warriors out there that are that are getting the info out and just doing their part to wake this up. Uh, I definitely uh, definitely appreciate that, sir. Thank you so much, Shakari. And uh, I just have one question, and I'll take my answer off the air to get the the next caller in line. Um, <laughs> what do you all think? Uh, I saw the statement on uh, Info Wars that Obama gave the stand down order in Benghazi. Uh, do you all think that this is? I mean, he's already, in my opinion, a, a, a tyrant traitor, um, and and has been. And I don't believe he was ever eligible to be the president of the United States. Do you all think that this will change the public's view? And if this goes viral and they actually, big media does start picking it up. Actually, in my opinion, this is big media. InfoWars is big media. Uh, do you all think that this will change the public's opinion? And I'll take my answer off there. Thank you. Well, to address your, your first thing, uh, talking about did Obama get the stand down order, we actually have a, a document. Maybe we can get a doc cam, guys. This is on InfoWars right now by Paul Joseph Watson. Congresswoman, Obama gave Benghazi stand-down order. Now, this is referencing a... You can take a look at that, Holland. I don't know if you had a chance to see it yet. Uh, This was referencing a congresswoman who was on a radio show, and she was asked, you know, you've dealt in uh, foreign relations and so forth. Who could give an order to have a stand-down like this? And she said, the only person I know of is the president. You know, Actually, her definitive statement was she was asked, because you have been an ambassador, you have been overseas with similar responsibilities Mm -hmm. and similar missions. Who gives such an order to stand down? Where does that come from? The answer from the former ambassador, the president of the United States. Yes. So that's pretty black and white, and the White House is not denying this. They're just not answering the question. Mm -hmm. So that uh, leads us to believe that Obama was directly involved in issuing that stand-down order, which led to the deaths of four Americans. Yeah, and I don't think this is just an incompetence deal. I mean, people knew about it. 
They let it happen. That some people may have been actively engaged in, in things such as stand downs. As far, as far as the caller's other point, will this help wake up the American people? Maybe. Um, the thing I've the, found. The people be, are going to wake up themselves. Yes. The thing I've found to be most effective because we get a lot of calls. How do, you, how do I wake up my cousin or my aunt or my dad or whoever? Is I tell people, tell your friend or whoever to set their own line. When it, when it hits this bad, I'll come back and tell you, and don't make an excuse for it. This is what you said. When it gets this bad, you'll wake up. You'll write your congressman. You'll call out Obama or whatever the case may be. Yeah, just write down something ludicrous that you don't think will ever happen and give it about three months in a will. Yeah. And then come <laughs> yeah. to me and let's talk. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, thank you for calling in. Uh, we'll go to our next caller, Eric from Tennessee. Welcome to the Alex Jones Show, Eric. Uh, it looks like you want to discuss the NATO arms agreement. Welcome to the show. Thanks, guys. Um, great to talk to both of you. Great to meet you for the first time. You're doing a great job hosting today. I just thought well, I'd throw much. that in there. Uh, the uh, the NATO Small Arms Agreement, uh, the the uh, the printing of the gun, that yes. blows my mind. I mean, the the fact that they can uh, they can throw that in there. Well, they they view it as a threat, obviously, because now right. that the ability to uh, disseminate that information to print a gun anywhere you like is out there, now they are shutting it down because it is a direct assault on the long-term plan to affect the market for guns. Exactly. And right. even more than that, when we had Cody Wilson, I'll let you finish, Collie, but I just want to throw this point out there. We had Cody Wilson on the show last night, and he said this isn't just an attack on guns. This is an attack on information. Because this information goes onto the internet and they're trying to censor this internet site. So it's beyond guns. It's just something that they think they can target safely or, you know, safely to an extent. Because you'll have the soccer moms and other people. I don't want people with printable guns. So that's how they start. And yeah. that's going to be the next thing, then the next thing. Then they don't want you making whatever in your house. But go ahead and make your, your point, Colin. Well, the, the thing about uh, what I was thinking, it's the first thing I thought about yesterday when I was listening to Alex. And uh, he called in and said that they had shut him down. The first thing that popped into my head was, well, if he was to limit his site where it could not be accessed worldwide, if it can only be accessed inside the United States, then at that point it would no longer be an export. Well, I'm sure Cody's a pretty smart guy. Actually, he is, and I'm pretty sure he's going to outsmart the government bureaucrats on this yeah, one I'm also. I'm pretty sure he has something up his sleeve. Yeah. Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants, fruits, vegetables, nuts, you name it. And the globalists have been going after gardening. They've been harassing people that have gardens in their front yards or their backyards. They've called for licenses for people to have gardens because you can't trust prisoners in the police state America to be able to grow their own food. That's why I've come to the realization that we need to become self-sufficient. You need to be informed. You need to have the Second Amendment to protect yourself. You need to be politically active to wake up others. You need to filter your water. But you also need to plant a garden. Even if you live in an apartment, you can do this. If you live in the countryside, obviously you can do it on a grand scale. There are so many green belts in areas uh, that humans don't even visit, uh, nearby cities and in suburbs, where people are now more and more planting their own little private gardens and meadows and off the side of the road. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a revolutionary act to unplug from the television, to unplug from the computer and all the globalist propaganda, and to go out in your backyard or your front yard or planters at your apartment or on the roof of the building where you live and to plant a garden. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest of times. The ARC All-in-One Seed Kit contains 70 varieties of 50,000 seeds of fruits, vegetables, medicinal, and culinary herbs. All ARC seeds are heirloom. Each type is labeled and sealed separately for ease of use and longevity. The Deluxe Emergency Seed Bank combines three of Emergency Seed Bank's top sellers. The Family Survival Emergency Seed Bank, the Medicinal Herb Seeds Pack, and the Culinary Herb Seeds Pack. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages for fruit, salad, salsa, peppers, and medicinal herbs and more. 
go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. A little seed can grow a huge tree that produces fruit for up to 50 years. We have the best life bombs. That's what these are. We have the best weapons against death out there at the lowest prices waiting for you to lovingly plant them and lovingly grow them and lovingly eat them and share them with others. We will strike back against the New World Order, and this is only one more initiative in our fight against them. So please join us at InfoWarsShop.com, or you can link through at InfoWars.com at the InfoWars Seed Center. Welcome to the last segment of The Alex Jones Show. I'm your guest host today, May 10th. My name is Holland Van Den Neuenhoff. I'd like to remind my audience uh, who I am. I served in the Marine Corps as a rifle squad leader. I continue to serve my country in exposing the truth. I was a writer and producer, producer for a documentary called A Noble Lie, Oklahoma City, 1995, which is available at the InfoWars store. I highly recommend you pick that up. I've been told more than once that it has been proven a valuable wake-up tool to the uh, so-called uninitiated to this evidence, or those who have been resistant to this information. And like that I is said, very well done. I want to tell you this story. I know we have callers, and I'll try to be brief. I was taking a criminal justice class uh, back in Oklahoma right before, as actually right before I got this job at InfoWars. And I was in the class, about 40 people. Some of these people going for, you know, advanced degrees and so on. And, I'm, and I engaged a professor and I asked him about the Oklahoma City bombing. And we started talking about not just Timothy McVeigh, but the other people out at LOM City. And in a class of about 40 people, this is a night class, you know, a lot of uh, older people, professionals. I'm probably one of the youngest people in the class. I'm probably like 25, 20, uh, 24 at the time. Well, I guess 25. And he says, you know, concerning LOM City, he said, I think you and I are the only people in this room who know what you're talking about in a room full of criminal justice majors. You know, because even people in Oklahoma don't know about this information I'm yeah. finding out. Yeah, LOM City, of course, was a neo-Nazi compound in eastern Oklahoma, which, by the way, was a federal honey trap. The yes. founder and leader was making $400 a month. We have the paperwork, $400 a month, as an informant while he's running one of the largest neo-Nazi communities in the country. What does that tell you? That that uh, so-called movement is largely funded by the federal government who invents these uh, bogeymen to justify their existence. But regarding Oklahoma City, Jakari, that's a good point. Um, the fact that that operation has existed in eastern Oklahoma without any kind of scrutiny, without yes. people knowing about it, tells you that it's, if it was a real threat to the establishment, it wouldn't be there. It yes. serves a purpose. Exactly, exactly. And to find out more about that, please check out A Noble Lie. It's available in the info store. And that supports our efforts and the efforts here of all the crew and staff at the operation supporting the Alex Jones Show. I'm really impressed with their uh, professionalism, with their capabilities, with the, the vast expanse of their presence here. And it's all possible by your support and you spreading the word. So let's uh, get to our callers before we leave. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have uh, Adrian from California. Adrian, welcome to the Alex Jones Show. Uh, what would you like to talk about? Um, hi, uh, this is Adrian Lamelli. I'm a first-time caller. Excellent. And and uh, I just wanted to say uh, thank you to everyone pushing the cause and everyone's effort for uh, bringing down uh, the criminal organization that we call the United States government. Um, and along with all the great points today that we, everybody's taken in, I want this point kind of out there for people to just think about and indulge in, uh, just an example of mainstream media, uh, madness, I guess. Um, they are a lot of things I've seen with the attacks on Alex Jones and Infowars on the Rachel Maddow show. Oh yeah, they're attacking him in the mainstream, and that's yeah. good because they can't good. they can't ignore and this it seems operation. Like every day uh, we're flipping through the mainstream channels, and they're talking about Drudge, or they're talking about Alex, or even Dan Badani sometimes. You know, mm -hmm. it's but at least people are uh, getting our attention. But please go ahead, sir. Um, yeah, I um, totally. Uh, I've noticed a big change in people as soon as Alex was on Piers Morgan and all that. Um, it just like people say, at first they deny you, they deny you even it's even existing, and then they call you crazy, and they're just uh, really nervous, and they are shutting down uh, in a lot of ways of their thinking, I guess. Um, We're seeing it played out. It's the history of rhymes as well as repeats. Anything else, Adrian? Yeah, uh, I just wanted to uh, say that I've seen the attempts of the mainstream media to push the libertarian movement strictly on uh, like the conservative side which i agree is, is an arm of that but 
I kind of feel like they're pushing Infowars and Alex Jones to the right wing. Oh, they're trying to pigeonhole. Visit Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. (laughs) 